Welcome to Tab Briefs, a weekly look at headlines from the world of faith for November 20th, 2020. I'm Tab Media Content Editor Carrie McWhorter, and here are some of the headlines that grabbed our attention this week. First up, government restrictions on religion are at their highest level around the globe since 2007, according to a recent analysis by Pew Research Center. In that analysis of data from 2018, the most recent full year for which data is available, Pew found an increase in laws, policies, and actions that impinge on religious beliefs and practices. In fact, Pew's analysis found the 2018 restrictions reached an all-time high since Pew began tracking those trends in 2007. What do these government restrictions include? For one thing, Pew found a rise in the number of governments using force, such as detentions and physical abuse, to to coerce religious groups. As of 2018, most of the 56 countries with high or very high levels of government restrictions on religion are in the Asia-Pacific region or the Middle East-North Africa region. Though the rise included some isolated situations of restricting people or small groups, Pew also found some countries implement widespread use of government force against religious groups, including Christian minorities. China has the highest score on the Government Restrictions Index out of all 198 countries and territories in the study. China has been near the top of the list every year since the study began. You may know from following Persecuted Church and Tab Media that the Chinese government restricts religion in a variety of ways, including banning entire religious groups, such as the Falun Gong movement and several Christian groups. China also prohibits certain religious practices, raiding places of worship and detaining and torturing individuals. This year, Tajikistan also stands out as the Tajik government has amended its religion law, increasing control over religious education in the country. The amendment also requires religious groups to report their activities to authorities, and the country has denied some minority religious groups official recognition. To read the complete Pew report, see that link I'll put in today's show notes. Next up, refugee programs have seen drastic cuts in U.S. resettlement in recent years, but that could change in 2021. Speaking to Jesuit Refugee Service, a Catholic group that works with refugees, Joe Biden pledged to raise the number of refugees allowed into the country to 125,000 during his first year in office. President Trump set that number at 15,000 for the current fiscal year, which started in October. The historic average is 95,000. Faith-based organizations have long played an important role in refugee resettlement work in the U.S. Six of the nine agencies tasked with resettlement by the federal government are faith-based and most of those agencies have released statements pledging to work with a new presidential administration. And finally, divorce in America hit a record low in 2019, according to a recent analysis of census data. The divorce rate has been falling in recent years, but according to information in the American Community Survey from the U.S. Census Bureau, 2019 saw the lowest divorce rate in 50 years. For every 1,000 marriages in 2019, only 14.9 ended in divorce. The median duration of current marriages has also increased to 19.8 years. And though some predicted a rise in divorce rates due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the American Family Survey reports that a majority of married Americans, nearly two-thirds, say the pandemic has made them appreciate their spouse more and has deepened their commitment to marriage. Longer marriages and fewer divorces is good news, but census data also shows another trend. Fewer Americans are actually getting married. The U.S. marriage rate hit an all-time low in 2019. For every 1,000 unmarried adults in 2019, only 33 got married. In 1970, 86 out of every 1,000 unmarried adults got married. Dr. Wendy Wong, Director of Research for the Institute for Family Studies, says America's so-called marriage divide is widening. College-educated and economically better off Americans are more likely to marry and stay married, but working class and poor Americans face more family instability and higher levels of singleness, Wong says. 
IFS research also found a dramatic decline in marriage certificates filed during the pandemic. The rates of both divorce and marriage dropping in America is sobering news about the state of marriage, Wong says, because of the impact both marriage and divorce have on the American family. Those are your tab briefs for Friday, November 20th, 2020. For more news from the world of faith, head to tabonline.org. And we also hope you will join us next Friday for a special Thanksgiving weekend edition of Tab Briefs. We will bring you three stories of gratitude that you won't want to miss. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope you have a great weekend.